Well, that kind of sucks. I'm just on my way to go battle my way up, up that mountain right there to a place which is right about um, up there. <laughs> And get that epic backdrop and make up videos while I check out the wolf sign up there. And um, I'm going to go anyways. You never know. It might clear up. But that is that popular spot I did last summer where all the bears are coming up behind me. I'll put a picture here. But that's where I'm going to go. I'm going to go up there. Yeah. We'll see how it looks by the time I get there. Maybe it'll, maybe it'll clear up. Whew. All right. So this is where I... One of the spots that I videotape earlier in the summertime, who knows how much snow is underneath that slide right now, <laughs> but that's where the stump is that I normally sit. We had those moose antlers and the deer antlers one time, I think, and that's where I sit and videotape, and this is what it looks like now. A little high up there, isn't it? Pretty cool. Well, let's hope that, uh, hope the wind doesn't hammer on that camera too much. I can't tell from here, but yeah, I know I shouldn't have been up here by myself, but whatever. <laughs> The uh, the sled decided to break down. I'd probably walk out of here in about four hours or something. No big deal. It's got a bit of a padded down sled trail, so I can walk out on top of that if, if I had to. <clears throat> but anyway, one of the things I wanted to address to a lot of people that email me, message me, and I just don't get the time because I know if I reply to somebody, they're going to try to engage in a massive question and answer. We've always back and forth, I just don't have time for it, unfortunately. But uh, I get a pile of you young people out there want to know how to become a hunting guide. And, uh, so I'm going to tell you how in this video, okay? So, first off, you need to be pre warned a little bit about what it's really going to be like. You know, there's all sorts of different flavors of hunting guides. There's guides in the South, in North America, the guide for wild hogs and, and white tailed deer and turkeys and stuff. And it's a, it's a lot different than the, the farther north you get or the farther west you get or into mountain guiding, okay? So, I mean, I've hunted all over North America. I've hunted a few times in Alaska. Uh, the Yukon have guided there. I've got in BC, all throughout BC. And uh, one thing I can tell you for me, for the style of hunts and guiding that I'm familiar with that I love is big game mountain hunting, mountain guiding, okay? So that's like, you know, stone sheep, mountain sheep, mountain goats, grizzly bears, moose, elk, caribou, what else? Black bear, wolves. Um, I don't really guide for deer because I'm too selfish. I love deer hunting myself. <laughs> but uh, that's what I feel we're guiding for. And for you to get into that, first, this is what you need to do. First, you need to truly in your heart understand that that is what you want to do and you are you love it, you're going to love it. Because no matter what you do in life, if you love it, no matter what, what it is you do, you're gonna be damn good at it, okay? And if it's okay, you're all right, it's all right. You're gonna do an okay, all right job and probably nobody's gonna to wanna to pass on their guide knowledge to you while you're there wrangling, learning how to guide. Because uh, these, hunt, these hunts are as well business transactions that need to go through smoothly and they are high dollar items. And 100% of those people who spend that money have been saving that money. It's a lifelong dream, okay? And it's their lifelong dream. It's not yours. It's theirs. And you have to be able to um, help them attain that goal. And you as well at the same time have to make that business transaction go across smooth and fair and make sure that customer gets every single cent of their money's worth. Okay, I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm talking about being a guide. But uh, so for me... What I did when I decided I wanted to be a professional full-time guide, there wasn't any internet then, and I went, I went to a magazine stand, and I got a, a Big Game Hunting Adventures magazine. I went, I read through the articles, and went to the back in the classifieds, and I tried to figure out who was most established, who had a bush plane, who had horses, who did remote hunting, and I wrote, hand wrote, I think, I think I hand wrote 11, 
letters, I sent them out and I got 14 replies. <laughs> Next thing you know, four months later, I'm sitting on top of a horse with 20 other horses going North Alaska Highway and off I went. But what typically will happen is that you'll be hired on as, as a, a laborer. This is also called a wrangler. And how you're gonna get that job is you are gonna do your homework. You're gonna find a reputable outfit. I would advise to find an outfit with a bush plane, remote camps and horse back, because that will mean that you are more than likely not gonna have resident hunter pressure. And for me, that's, that's a big bonus because you want that full remote wild hunt experience. And if you get a job with somebody who potentially guides out of a pickup truck or on quads, that means there's going to be resident hunter pressure doing the same thing there as well and typically you're not going to quite get as high quality a game in those areas as you are the remote the remote outfits so then you're going to send off your application to whoever it is you choose you want to work for and you're going to be persistent you're going to be stubborn and you're going to, you are going to keep on trying to get a hold of them and tell them you want to work for them you want to show them you're motivated and you're not going to quit and once they do hire you, you are more than likely going to be doing the following. You're going to be getting up in the dark, lighting the fires in the cabins, the tents, and you are going to be hiking in the dark to find all those horses and get them in in time in the morning before everybody's had breakfast. All right? And you're going to get the horses that the guide wants for the day, and you're going to help saddle them up. Once the hunters and the guides take off for the day, you are then going to be responsible for getting the cook, the firewood, the cook, the water, doing camp chores. Sometimes the wranglers will have to go out and cut trail. All right. Now, if you're working out good and you're showing a good keen interest and you're doing what you're told and you're not telling people you know how to do things better, <laughs> then, and you're getting along with people and the guides can tell that you are definitely cut to be a guide, then they're going to take you hunting for the day with them. And that's when it gets real cool. It's, it just gets real cool for you. And then you start to pick up on the skills the guide has. You learn from him, you watch, you get to see all the, the crazy, wild excitement, the experiences. And then, uh, and then you'll further know whether or not that's the, the career you want to pursue, is being right there and watching it. And then uh, other times the guide will take you the day after they harvest an animal and you and the guide will take off to go get that that game meat and the antlers and all the goodies with a with a couple pack horses and you'll get to go and learn how to do that and you'll spend time with a guide and you can throw questions at him and he'll probably be teaching his stuff that way too and then you get to go back to camp and then you get to learn how to cape and caping is turning the lips and the eyes and the nose and the ears out in the hides and get him cleaned off for the uh for the taxidermy end of things if that's the route the hunter's gonna go and then uh then that's what you do and you work your ass off you never complain and um, also, the number one quality you must possess is you do not have it in you to say, I can't. And you, you already know before you get out there if, if you have it in you to say, I can't. Because if you can't do your job and you're out in that remote setting, somebody else out there can do your job. And they can do their job and they can do your job at the same time. Okay? Because once you decide to take on a remote job, like that, there's nobody there to bail you out. Mommy's not there to help you, nobody. The worst, most nastiest dis <laughs> discomfort scenarios happen out there. I mean, the worst. It could be minus five, minus 10, you're froze, it's, you're soaked, you're doing whatever, something happened, you had a few horse wrecks, you still have to ride another four hours in the dark to get to where you're going. You might have a wreck, two horses might take off that way, buck off all their pack boxes, empty out all the shit, and you gotta follow and find every little bit of that trail of wreckage they left, get it all back together, get all those horses back together all by yourself sometimes, and not cry about it, and not leave without them, and tell somebody you can't find them or you had a bad moment. <laughs> no matter what the weather conditions are, the time of day or night, when the shit goes down, you have to fix it. You have to do it and you can't snivel and cry about it. And that's all there is to it. And li lives can depend on that, all right? So that's a big, big quality. And that's actually a little bit of a speech that I always, I'd always give to the new Wranglers we get every, every summer. They'd be sitting on the side of the highway with us waiting for the next, you know, horse trailer load attack and horses and gear to come and get dropped off before we start a 14 to 18 hour ride. And uh, I'd tell all those young Wranglers flat out, 
every one of them say you already know if you got it in you to quit and you already know that and if you come into my camp and you quit and you say I can't I'm gonna send you walking to the highway because now I have to do my job and your job and those times that you quit and failed were $1,000 days my hunter is paying to be here and you stole those days from him by quitting and not being able to get those horses in okay so you got to you got to understand that and that might sound like a bit of a dick attitude to some of you out there but it's actually not <laughs> it's just the way it goes you got to weed out the weak link when it comes to a remote camp like that you have to weed the weak links out before you get them into that predicament that scenario where they can have a real big neck nasty negative impact on uh, on that business transaction on that hunt and potential on somebody's safety okay so um, the longer what I found is to, uh, what I as well found is the farther north you go to guide typically it's going to be the shorter season which means the shorter number of days that you're gonna to have to go into the woods and for me I was all about doing as long as I could. I wanted the most days I could out there. I want to stay out there if I could year round. Obviously that's impossible. So what I found is for me, guiding in Northern BC did it for me because you know, you, the farther North you go, winter comes sooner and those horses have to get ridden out quick before they get snowed in. They, they could all die that way, right? So, uh, but anyways, but in BC for me personally, there's more species to guide for. There's longer season and uh, it's just it's just too much fun it's too i love it absolutely love it i mean you got look at the very the variety of game we have in bc and compare it to anywhere else it's incredible so that's why british columbia is one of my favorites and as well i could get sometimes 120 days plus in the middle of nowhere and you know another bonus too is you meet people from all over the planet <laughs> it's pretty cool and some amazing uh characters that you would never ever normally meet in everyday life back at home you know, man, I've met presidents, corporate monsters, Elvis's best friend. I, I, I could go down the, the, I could go down and down and down the line of the characters that you meet, and then you get invites all over the place, and you get to go visit these people, and you get to see a big chunk of life, and it's it's just a real super thing to do. But uh, another thing, here's a quick little warning. Another thing that can work against you is if you are not single and you go pursue this lifestyle, because if you do you're probably going to be single in the end. <laughs>